after a full month of January that was best described as the best laid plans. Well, all of a sudden we head into February and after only two whack games under the belts of your GCU Lopes women's basketball team, they're about to come fast and furious. And we begin it tonight here at GCU Arena with a revamped Big Monday. Your Lopes going for their 10th win of the season, taking on one of the new teams in the Western Athletic Conference in 2021, the Texans of Charlton State University. Good evening, everybody. Jim Howe welcoming you back to GCU Arena for game two of this revamped five-game homestand, one that began on 72 hours notice on Friday against non-conference full Idaho State and will finish this Saturday night against a regularly scheduled conference matchup against UTRGV. And as I welcome my partner in crime to the microphones, Jack O'Hara. Jack, they've been waiting a long time since they had four straight whack weekends that didn't go off as planned. Now, all of a sudden, four whack games in the span of six nights. Yeah, ready or not, here we come. We got two games this week, Monday and Tuesday, against these Texans. And then, of course, the Vaqueros come to town over the weekend, Jim. And we've gotten a little tasted a few weeks ago taking on those Aggies here at GC Arena on the heart of Phoenix, Arizona. Things not really going according to plan. We got a taste to see what it's like when the Lopes are able to battle some adversity. The Aggies doing a great job containing Katie Scott, who is the only WAC player in history to win the WAC Player of the Week over three consecutive weeks. And it's gonna be interesting to see how they deal with the Texans tonight. Their confidence is rolling coming into this one after a big win on the road against UTRGV. They won that one by 16, Jim. If they get off to a fast start tonight, we'll see what their confidence is like going into this one, first time visiting Lope Country. And even though that was in non-conference play for the Texans, it meant everything. It snapped a seven game losing streak and it set new highs for points in a game and field goal percentage in a game against a D1 appointment, opponent. And Jack, who would have thought that coming into this matchup that Tarleton would be coming in with an impressive win and the Lopes would be coming in with a bit of a disappointing loss Friday. It's definitely a game changer, Jim, because you look at the confidence of each team. We talked about the confidence right now of Katie Scott. Started the season off with a bang, proving why she was the highly touted player coming out of high school. And of course, she's kind of hit a brick road recently with these defenses finding a way to containing her. And it's proved very well for the Vaqueros, as well as Idaho State this past Friday. While Tarleton, like you mentioned, they were struggling before that big win. They jumped out to a nine point advantage early on in that first quarter last Wednesday in Texas against UTRGV. Again, if the Lopes are able to get out to a big league early on tonight, it might be a completely different story given Tarleton's history. So even though it was a win over UTRGV, the Texans are still 0-4 in conference, and the Lopes are gonna try and make sure that that offer stays constant. We've got the starting lineups and all the play-by-play -play coming up on the other side of this break. It's the Texans from Texas and the Lopes from Phoenix right here at GCU Arena and right here on GCU TV. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. How can you describe Whataburger's honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um... You know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich at Whataburger. Just about showtime for this Monday night affair, and let's send it down to courtside for the man who normally is the familiar voice on men's basketball, now doing women's basketball tonight. The man with the freshly minted PhD, our P Paul Denuser. for tonight's Western Athletic Conference women's basketball matchup featuring the Texans of Tarleton State University and your Grand Canyon University Edlopes. 
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask once again that you please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Joshua Gillespie, a junior majoring in finance and economics and the Havocs president. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can gather together this evening and play the sport of basketball. Uh, Lord, we pray for safety for the players and wisdom for the officials as they play this game tonight. Uh, God, we pray that everything that is done tonight is done in your, uh, for your honor and in your name. We pray. Amen. Thank you, Joshua. And now let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's contest. First of all, for the Texans of Tarleton State University, and we welcome you to the Western Athletic Conference. At forward, a 5'11 senior, number one, Lucy Benson. At guard, a 5'6 freshman, number two, Ayana Dorsey. At forward, a six foot junior, number four, Emily Cunningham. At guard, a 5'9 senior, number five, Caitlin Guillory. And at guard, a 5'10 junior, number 32, Candid Fari. The Texans are 4-10 on the season, 0-4 in Western Athletic Conference play. They're led by head coach Misty Wilson, assistant coaches Nick Cantrell, Jared Vieira, and Bailey Wimp.
Katie Scott will start to drive, kick out for Caldwell. Low block, there's Scott, double team, give it off for Brown. Stop on the baseline, she's double team, give it to Pieta. Her first bucket won't go, but there's Scott getting the offensive board. Fresh 20 on the shot clock. Jackson stumbles, trying to avoid the hell ball, and as she got rid of it, it is indeed a hell ball that possession arrow will send it the other way towards the Texans. Well, that's obviously good news, Jack, that we at least saw Katie Scott being able to kind of flex her muscles in the interior. Yeah, trying to gain some confidence for herself early on. She knows if she gets into a hole early on, that confidence might be shaken the way that these last three games have turned out, trying to turn the tables early. Lucy Benson almost had it stripped away, able to save, gets it over to the side, but Emily Cunningham's three won't go, but Benson able to track down the rebound. So here's Ayanna Dorsey. Dorsey has it knocked away, and then Katie Scott will tie her up, and that will send the possession arrow the Lopes direction. So alternating possessions times two, and the Lopes will get it back. Now the Lopes just have to kind of find the range from the perimeter because that was a major bugaboo against Idaho State Friday afternoon. In fact, the Lopes missed not one, not two, but 16 Three-point attempts before they were finally able to find the range midway through the fourth quarter. Lopes coming off that eight-point loss, and as we mentioned in the pregame show, Charlton coming off a very surprising 16-point win against UTRGV in non-conference play in Edinburgh, Texas. Snapped a seven-game skid. Pieta with the ball out front, eight on the Lopes shot clock. She'll start to drive as she sees daylight. No second wave of defense as she'll put it up off the glass and in. Very intelligent play right there from LP. She found a window and took it right to the house. Well, we mentioned the Lopes missed their first 16 three-pointers of the game Friday. Pieta was the one who broke the seal, but that was Lauda's only scoring of the game. So good to see her start to get up and off. Two minutes into the game, Lopes with a 4-0 edge. There's a nice pass over the top. Benson being fronted by Caldwell, and Lucy Benson will put it up off the glass and in. Well, this team does have size, but not necessarily something that should overwhelm the Lopes on the interior. Katie Scott, the tallest person on the floor at 6'3", no matter who the Texans throw at her. Stumbling is Pieta, saves it to Caldwell. Give it off to Brown, and now Brown is tripped up on the double team. Caitlin Guillory wanted double dribble or carrying the ball. Instead, it will be her first personal foul of the evening. So an on-shooting foul as the Lopes will get it underneath. Pieta looking, waiting, better hurry. And can she get it in? Just barely, and it turns out to be a turnover anyway as it's off the hands of Scott. Well, the Lopes should be used to that, Jack. They get it all the time in practice. Well, you got to give a lot of credit right there to Dorsey, Maine, and Katie Scott right there, giving Laura Pierre no choice but to throw it up and hope for the best right there. So Dorsey now battling with Pieta. She inches out of backcourt, races down the left side, sees daylight, and she will go up and miss the lay-in. She winds up on her rear end, and the Lopes come down five on four. Jackson off for Caldwell. Low block, Brown. She's alone, and she'll score. Well, the Lopes did a good job of seeing who wasn't covered, and they got it to Tierra, the freshman, very quickly. And the Spanaway native is in the scoring column. Three of the five Lopes starters have scored. It's 6-2 GCU. Out front, Dorsey. She not only leads this team in scoring, but also in assists. Another lob pass, but underneath it's Caldwell. Stripping Cunningham beautifully. TC down the right side. One on four. She'll challenge anyway. Can't get the shot to go, but she's knocked down hard and fouled. So Caldwell just seeing the daylight, waiting for the defense to turn around and face her. Didn't happen, and Benson winds up with the foul. So both teams going to the bench. Marissa Escamilla, who despite the fact that she comes off the Texans bench, is the only other Texan scoring in double figures be besides Ayanna Dorsey. Taylor Caldwell to the line. First free throw is good. Meanwhile, Tiana Brown and Kennedy Shorts making their first appearances in the Lopes lineup. Tiana, the 5'9 
Jr. and the older sibling of Tierra out of Spanaway, Washington. And Shorts, the pride of Long Beach, California, the six foot one junior who started most of the first part of the season. Both free throws good. Jackson going for the steal, diving attempt. Goes out of bounds. The Texan will ha Texans will have it, but nice hustle by Nana. Lopes eight, Texans two. Benson trying to inbound, does so. And now Dorsey as the Lopes kind of back off of the press. Still trying to get it across that midcourt line. Finally, it's handled by Benson, and then Benson has it stolen away by Tiara Brown. Brown will come down two on two and has it knocked away by Benson. Nice play by Lucy Benson, and then Shorts will reach in and pick up the foul. So the two power forwards exchange turnovers. And the Texans, the benefactors of that one, will get it in the backcourt, but once again, having to battle that Lopes full court pressure defense. In for Escamilla. Inching out of backcourt, gets it off for Dorsey. Now Dorsey comes down the right side, throws it in the corner. Quick three pointer put up and in by Caitlin Guillory. So that'll cut the Lopes six point lead in half at eight to five. Tiana Brown on the right side along with Taylor Caldwell. Coming to get it, top of the key is Jackson. Jackson covered by Dorsey, moves to the left side. Lob for Brown, Brown faced the hoop, back away from Benson, keeps the dribble going. Now starts to back in, nice hook pass underneath. Shorts has got it, but can't get the layup to go. And Brown's slow to get up on that gimpy hamstring. Escamilla down the right side. Brown again swatting at that ball, trying to come with a steal towards the midcourt line. Escamilla left side, directing traffic as she stops the dribble. Finally able to get Guillory to come out and get it. Shot clock down to nine, and they haven't gotten anywhere close to their bucket yet. Down to five, now four. Dorsey's going to fire a three to tie, but it rolls off. Escamilla skies in to get the rebound, knocks away from Brown, but Caldwell able to take it away from her. Now Caldwell again another drive, again seeing that the defense didn't turn around, and again drawing the foul, again on Guillory. How many times can I say again? So Caldwell will head to the line with 5.17 left to go, and Pieta will give Nana Jackson her first breather. As seven-year head coach Misty Wilson goes to her bench again, and J.C. Morton will check into the lineup. Morton, 5'11", sophomore from Stephenville, Texas. And, yeah, you're right. She stayed home to play college ball. Stephenville is the home of Tarleton State University. First free throw by Caldwell is good. So Caldwell trying to go four for four from the line and does, and that's obviously good news because the Lopes have not shot well from the stripe the last couple of games. 10-5, Lopes on top. Dorsey able to get around Pieta, keeps on driving. Ball fake, goes up. That one, I think, Brown got a piece of it, but unfortunately also got a piece of Dorsey. First foul on Tierra oh, Brown, oh, and that will send Dorsey to the line for the first free throws for Tarleton tonight. Dorsey leads this team in scoring, assists, and steals, and just for good measure, she also shoots 84% from the free throw line, but the first free throw doesn't indicate that as it rolls around and off. Texans still looking for their first win in conference play. They've dropped a couple of double headers, one to Cal Baptist and one to Seattle. Both free throws missed by Dorsey. Escamilla had the rebound, but tries to outlet it. Stolen by Caldwell. Caldwell comes down, crashes in, and this time the defense was ready. Guillory took the charge. Offensive foul, Taylor Caldwell. Well, you mentioned the aggression early on from Taylor Caldwell. It was nice to see her get those four buckets early on, but she's been way too aggressive as of late, really flirting with those personal fouls. She fouled out on Friday, we saw, flirting with fouling out two weeks two weekends ago against the Aggies. Look for her to take a step back moving forward as the Lopes can ill afford to lose her late in the game. Dorsey now double teamed out front. Waits and gets help from J.C. Morton. Back to Dorsey, still plenty of time to get a shot off. Trying to work one-on-one -on, -one on Pieta, but Lauda stays with her. Morton throws it out front. 
Here's Cunningham with seven on the shot clock. Lob over the top. Scott gets a piece of it. Pieta fights for the re fights for the loose ball. She slipped, and by the time Scott got over to the baseline, it will be Charlton basketball. But first, a timeout. 4:33 left to go, first quarter, and the Lopes off to a good start. It's GCU 10, Charlton five. Keep it here for more coverage of Lopes women's basketball on GCU TV. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Well, the best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford, and Sanderson Ford proud to bring you the three keys to the game. And for that, we bring you Jack O'Hara. Well, you want to talk about lessons learned, Jim. In each of the last two of the last three games, the Lopes have learned that they can be dealt with. I mean, Katie Scott's been contained extremely well by opposing defenses over the last three matchups. Laura Pierre and Taylor Caldwell's aggression, we were alluding to it early on, has gotten the better of them, both fouling out on Friday against Idaho State. You've got to take a step back this weekend to learn from your mistakes. I think we've seen that defensively so far. The Lopes like a swarm of bees early on against the Texans, really making a big impact early, resulting in that five-point lead. Fourth quarter magic is great, but, you know, wouldn't it be great to control the game early on? I mean, listen, the Lopes did a great job, you know, mounting a comeback on Friday and look, looked like a marginal defeat at the hands of Idaho State. They went on a 15-1 run late to erase that large deficit, but it should have been a little bit more contained. Look for them to get and find that weakness early and adjust and adapt and treat them like rookies. This is a Texans team. This is their first trip to Lope country. They're feeling pretty good about themselves after a 17 point win over UTRGV on the road. If the Lopes are able to jump out to a strong lead early on like they have, maybe they'll look to shake that confidence that the Texans are walking in here with. Well, after the timeout, the Texans had only two on the shot clock after that possession moving around. Couldn't get a shot off, and now Lada Pieta makes them pay with a 15-footer on the other end, so Lada two for two from the perimeter. Shorts going for the steal. Pieta the swat, scramble for the basketball. Escamilla gets to it, and then as Shorts and Pieta converge, the foul is going to be called on Shorts, and even though the Lopes have only four team fouls, Shorts has half of those as Carla Balagay makes her first appearance into the Lopes lineup tonight. Non-shooting foul, so the Texans will have it out front as, as Morton looks. Lob, low block, Pieta converging but had her foot on the line when she tried to make the steal. So now the Texans, instead of inbounding it out front, will inbound it underneath. Shorts heading to the pine with those two personal fouls. Shorts, now Katie Scott replaces her, and Katie Scott responds by getting the inbound steal. Here comes Pieta. Texans able to scramble back defensively. So Scott with the ball out front. Give it to Pieta, almost threw it away. Pieta waiting for a screen, moves away from it, puts it up from 10, won't go, fights to keep her own rebound, but Escamilla able to get the tap. Escamilla trying to dribble away from Pieta, and that has been a battle so far for the Texans each time they've tried to get it out of backcourt. Morton with the ball on the side. Out front Cunningham, now for Dorsey. Dorsey gives it to Morton, who sprung free, fires a three, but that's way off the mark. And nothing but white jerseys underneath for the defensive rebound. Lopes with their largest lead at 12-5. We're nearing the three-minute mark of the first quarter. Caldwell alone for a minute, passes up the open look, comes around the screen. Now she'll put it up, but it's too hard. Rebound down to the floor. Cunningham's got it. Outlet for Morton. Morton's got Caldwell to beat, and she'll put up the shot. Won't go. Good defense by TC, but Morton gets the offensive follow, gives it off. Shot will not go. That time off of Haley Ibarra. A third time as Escamilla puts it up, 
and this time she'll draw free throws. That foul on Carla Balagay, and offensive rebounding was a big factor in the Idaho State loss. You know Molly Miller doesn't want to see that again. Well, I think Deanna Brown did an excellent job containing defensively there, but again, the Lopes unable to pick up their own rebounds, really giving Tarleton State a run for their money early on. So Escamilla at the free throw line for the first time this evening, and the first free throw is good. Trying to make this a five-point edge for the Lopes, and she does. We'll set the lineups when we get a chance as Taylor Caldwell quickly down the right side. Rifles a cross-court pass to Tiana Bound. Brown, who keeps driving, then tries to throw it out to Scott. Too hard, it's stolen away by Escamilla. Again with Caldwell to beat. Caldwell knocked the ball away, but Escamilla staying with the play, gets it back, puts it up and in. So the Lopes a little bit sloppy the last couple of times down the floor, and suddenly their lead down to one possession. Balagay hands off for Caldwell. Caldwell stop at the elbow. Here's Pieta, drive the baseline all the way underneath. Reverse layup, no. Balagay fights, gets the rebound. Fresh shot clock for GCU. Here's Pieta. Wants to look in for Scott, but she's well covered by Cunningham at the moment. Pieta starts the dribble going. Shot clock down to nine. Goes to the right side. Scott comes out to get it. Steps around Cunningham, but traveling violation as she picked up the pivot foot before, before she put the ball on the floor. So suddenly after that timeout, Lopes a little bit out of sync. In fact, they have gone over two minutes without a point. And suddenly the Texans with a chance to possibly tie the ball game with a three. Inbound pass kicked away by Tierra Brown, who's back in there. So the Lopes of the lineup of the sisters Brown, that being Tierra and Tiana, as well as Lauda Pieta, Carla Balagay, and Nidasia Jackson. Escamilla finally gets it in, and then a foul call. In the backcourt, Tiana Brown battling with Dorsey, and when Dorsey got it, she got accidentally tripped by Tiana, and the bad news gets worse because that's five team fouls, so both teams will head down to the Tarleton free throw line with the Texans in the bonus. Things starting to unravel a bit, Jim, after that first time out taken a few moments ago. The Lopes looking very good early on. Again, very aggressive early on defensively, kind of like a swarm of bees against this Tarleton offense, really not allowing them to make anything of these opportunities offensively early on. But as time has progressed, we're seeing a lot of those mistakes that we've seen over the past several weeks and a lot of those mistakes that we saw on Friday afternoon as well. So Dorsey to the line, makes the first and makes the second. And courtesy of the free throw route, Texans have eliminated this seven point lead. It's down to one as Benson will check back in. Make that Morton for Escamilla who gets high fives as she heads to Misty Wilson's bench. Brown on the left side, make that Tiana Brown. Now off for Balagay. Balagay holding the ball, waiting for Pieta. Pieta backs it away as we're under two minutes left to go in this first quarter. Pieta almost traveled. Got away with it. Give it to Jackson in the corner. Pieta will fire a three too hard. Balagay had the right position but couldn't tap it to herself. Texans run the other way. Dorsey has to back it out as the Lopes able to scramble back defensively. Now the Lopes want a trap. Dorsey trying to play keep away and gets it wow. right underneath. And nobody within any, any room of Camden Foray and she will score and give the Texans the lead. There was no white and purple in sight, Jim. So a few defensive breakdowns, and now the Lopes suddenly trail for the first time tonight. Trying to change it, Tiana Brown, but the shot's too hard from 15. Here come the Texans with renewed confidence. Cunningham stops, now throws it to Dorsey, but threw it on the other side of the midcourt line. That'll be a back and over and a turnover. Katie Scott checking back in as Molly Miller wants to get some offensive punch. Caldwell also back in after a very quick breather. Caldwell running the point at the moment. Pieta in the game now with the ball. Give it to Tierra Brown. Now for Caldwell. She's alone, but the three-pointer won't go. Scott trying to tip it to herself, but the Texans right there, and Dorsey comes away with it. Dorsey comes down the left side. Pieta staying right with her. Gives an out front for Emily Cunningham. Cunningham is the starting center, but she spends an awful lot of time out on the perimeter. That's one of the reasons why she's their leading three-point shooter. Shot clock at 12 for Dorsey. 
Dorsey backs away. Fall away three won't go. Jackson this time has the rebound to herself. And the Lopes with the shot clock off can go for the final shot of the quarter if they want to. Piet on the right side, still with 13 seconds to get it off. Inside for Scott, double team for a moment, now becomes single team, and she'll take advantage of it and score. Four seconds, three seconds, will they get it in? They do to Dorsey, and Dorsey will fire one from behind midcourt that will not go. So the Lopes allow seven unanswered points or eight unanswered, excuse me, to the road team before they're able to take the lead back after one quarter. End of one here at GCU Arena in the heart of the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. Here's your score in a nip and tuck whack battle. It's the GCU Lopes 14, Tarleton Texans 13. Keep it here for more Lopes women's bat. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer. Get the best gear to show off your low pride. Go to lopeshop.gcu.edu to find everything Grand Canyon University from the newest apparel to the coolest accessories. Use promo code GCTV20 today only to get 20% off for being a GCU TV viewer. Log on and get your gear today. Lopes offense looks sharp in the first six minutes of that first quarter. That's why they had a 12 to five lead. But as we look at the first quarter stats, Jack, suddenly they're only shooting 38% from the field. They've gotten two more shots than Tarleton, and right now that's kind of the difference. That was a pivotal media timeout halfway through, Jim. Looked like an, a completely different team, both offensively and defensively. The defense standing out big time in the first half of that first quarter as the Lopes jumped out to that seven point margin. But again, following that timeout, the Lopes starting to make a little bit of the same mistakes that we've seen over the past two weeks. Look for them to clean some stuff up at the start of this second quarter. Molly Miller's got her starters back in to start the second quarter. Texans with the ball and eight on the shot clock. Here's Escamilla driving. Hook pass in the corner. Here's Guillory out for Dorsey. She's going to have to fire a long three. It's short. And the rebound down to the lap of the Lopes, Tierra Brown. Pierre was looking up court for Jackson, but just couldn't have it, didn't have quite enough space to get the pass to her. So the Lopes will set up in the half court set. That's what they've been doing most of the last three games, not always by choice. Here's Katie Brown, covered by Guillory in a switch. Give it to Brown. She'll fire a three. That will not go. And the Lopes continue to be cold from three point range. They've missed their first three shots from behind the arc. Here's Escamilla, backdoor pass, inside, but on the pass off, offensive foul, good charge taken by Tierra Brown, and Forey made a good pass, but her momentum carried her right into Brown. So let's see if the Lopes can take advantage of the turnover. As the Lopes have gone cold, they have just one field goal in the last four and a half minutes. So here's Taylor Caldwell, one handing the ball out front. Picked up by Forey. Brown starting to work one on one, give it out for Scott. Scott, stop, throw for Caldwell. She'll square and fire for three and that misses everything. And that will go harmlessly out of bounds. But you can tell, Jack, the Lopes just are not feeling it, and they're tight when they're setting up from behind the three-point arc. Yeah, something has definitely changed out there. You tell Katie Scott really looking to find her window early on. We talked about how her confidence has been shaken over the past few weeks, looking to play a big impact offensively 
early on, but Taylor Caldwell just did not look comfortable taking that last shot. Well, Dorsey got around two defenders, but as she started to get to the front court, she lost her balance, and to try and avoid the steal, kicked the ball. So that will indeed be a turnover. So Dorsey a little bit out of control, but the Lopes have got to get within their offense and kind of go back to their bread and butter. If they're going to stay in the half-court set, then they need to use their bigs to their advantage and let the offense run through Scott and Brown and see if they can set up the outside shots. There's a lob over the top, but they were ready for it. Benson with the weak side help make that... J.C. Morton, and she's able to force the steal. Inside pass, there's Escamilla, and she'll lay it up and in. Good pass on the interior. So back to a one-point Texans lead, only the second time they've led so far tonight. Lob pass right on the money. Called well to Tiana, Tierra Brown, and Brown will get the lay-in. She couldn't have tossed that up any more perfectly there with, the back, with her back against the wall there, throwing that one up over the defender for the beautiful layup there for Brown. Vieta almost missed the steal twice, and now it's thrown away. Caldwell, here she comes, there she goes, to the hoop for the scoop for two. So Pieta really set the table on that, and now Jackson sets the table on that turnover as Escamilla faked out her own player. Make that four -y. and Jackson was right in her face to force the turnover. Lopes will have it in the front court. And this is what we expect of GCU, Jack. Well, this is the momentum, hopefully, that the Lopes need. You talk about Tarleton getting off to fast starts, really boosting their confidence early on. The Lopes need to separate themselves early on from this Texans team if they want to walk away with a victory here tonight. Caldwell waiting for everybody to get set. Here's Scott moving to the left side. Now for Pieta as the Lopes going to a weave out front. Scott start to drive, kick for Pieta straight away. Shot clock at 10. Pieta looking at the referee saying, I didn't move the feet, but unfortunately he disagrees. And Brian Woods calls a traveling violation. So the Lopes will give it right back up. And one of the things we've also been talking about, Jack, is the fact that the Lopes can force turnovers, but they want that turnover margin to be solid. That's already the ninth Lopes miscue in the first 13 minutes. Pieta going for turnover number 13 forced. Can't get it, and that leads to a three-pointer by Cunningham, but that's way off the mark. Here comes Tiana Brown, full head of steam down the left side. Texans are back defensively. Here's Scott out front for Pieta. Scott has been faking that three-point shot pretty much for the last three games. She needs to start firing a couple of those just to keep the defense honest. And remember, Scott's their leading three-point shooter. Here's Tierra Brown, sweeps inside. Shot won't go. Tiana Brown gets the offensive board. And with a lot of traffic, dribbles out front. And as she does, she's hacked and fouled by Emily Cunningham. First personal, second team foul. Well, Brown, with a nice pair of moves, was able to get the layup, but just too deep underneath, and instead the Lopes will have it underneath. Here is Pieta with a fresh 20 on the shot clock. They swing it around for Tierra Brown. One dribble, hands off for Scott. Scott starts a dribble drive, keeps coming as it poked away, and it's stolen away. Here comes Ibarra. Pass inside, goes back to Ibarra, and she'll score. And the Lopes not quick to get back defensively, and that does not make Molly Miller look very happy. And just like that, she's going to get Caldwell and Balagay up off the bench. They'll check in next time it's dead. Scott double team. Off balance jumper, no. Tierra Brown one hands the offensive board. Nice pass to the cutting Scott, but Katie can't finish it. Tough break. Quickly out of backcourt, lead pass for Ibarra. Lopes get back on defense. Ibarra around the screen. They give it to Foray. Now for Ayana Dorsey. Now that one knocked away from Ibarra. She retreats, gets it back with 10 on the shot clock. And Tiana Brown grabbing at the ball, forces the turnover. Possession error on the hell ball will send it GCU's direction. Well, once again, here's this defense creating opportunities for the offense. Now it's time to execute some plays offensively. You talk about Katie Scott finding some opportunities early on, not catching any breaks, especially on that last layup attempt. But the Lopes are gonna need to, again, separate themselves, have a sizable lead against this Texans team if they wanna gain some confidence offensively. Lopes have dropped to 35% from the field. They're seven out of 20. 
Van Lavaris in to try and change that. This is her first appearance in the Lopes lineup. Balagay tried to, to lob it in. It's tapped away. Balagay gets it back, give it to Jackson, fire a three. That's off the mark. And the Lopes continue to be cold from behind the three-point line. Texans in the front court. Here is Ibarra dribbling away from Jackson. Throws it out front for Emily Cunningham. Lob over the top, and it's right on the money. And that'll be an easy lay-in for Kalen Candon Forey. And the Texans are back out on top by a point. They've never led by more than one. But they continue to make a game of it. Escamilla underneath. Whistled for a foul as she goes down. J.C. Morton will check in. But first, we have a timeout on the floor. 4.31 left to go before halftime. And it continues to be nip and tuck to the disdain of Lopes fans here at GCU Arena. It's Tarleton 19, GCU 18 right here on GCU TV. How can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Hey, GCU fans, if you haven't already, it's time to download the Lope Nation app. Watch GCU home sporting events directly from your app. Receive personalized news and score updates from your favorite Lopes teams. Follow the Lopes closer than ever before with scores, schedules, stories, and more. And even more perks will be on the way shortly, so stay tuned for that. Search GCU Athletics in your phone's app store or download the GCU Athletics app now at gcu.com slash app. With Jack O'Hara, Jim Howe back here at GCU Arena on staff that will not make Molly Miller happy right now considering she loves to go to her bench early and often that if you're talking about bench points, the Lopes have not scored and Tarleton's bench has contributed 12 of the 19 points they have on the board. That's why the Texans lead by one. Here's Van Lavaris directing traffic out front now to Nana Jackson. Jackson will back away, shot clock at eight. Waits for a Balagay screen and now throws it past Caldwell. Goes out of bounds. It will be Tarleton's basketball. And that was a case of too many people in the same area as Vadas was there for a split second. I think she was the intended receiver, but Vadas went inside. So another Lopes turnover. That's 10 here in the first half. Escamilla dribbling down the right side. She's been make that 40. 40. Gets it in the front court, give it to Cunningham. Another backdoor pass. It gets to Ibarra, and Ibarra is knocked down hard as the Lopes converged. That'll be on Balagay. That is her second. That's the first team foul of the Lopes here in quarter number two, and it comes with 3.56 left. Now this three-person refereeing crew making sure that there are only five players on the court for the Lopes as Jackson comes off. They'll lob out front, kind of a free-for-all, but Cunningham able to get to the spot. Off for Ibotta. Ibotta running the point with Dorsey on the bench. Now she's double-teamed, trying to scramble away from it. Who's open? Gets it to Forey. She'll fire it from 10. That's too hard. Nothing but white jerseys underneath for the defensive rebound. Now the Lopes have to take advantage of it. The Lopes have scored just four points in this quarter. Balagay inside, started to turn, and then Ibotta knocks it away, held ball, and it's Tarleton's basketball. And again, the weak side help has been very crisp, Jack, for Tarleton, and it's really bothering the Lopes. And the Lopes just unable to get off the schneid in that sense, Jim. And Tarleton doing an excellent job taking advantage 
of some of these opportunities. We mentioned if they get out to a sizable lead, there may be no turning back. Well, this is their opportunity right here, right now. Well, Abata getting high fives as she heads to the Texans bench. Dorsey back in at the point, gets the inbounds pass. Now for Escamilla. Escamilla dribbling away from Brown. Now it's Dorsey covered by Balagay in a switch. They get it right side for Guillory, who's back in. Now to ben, or to Morton. She's going to fire a three. That's off the mark. Neither team doing very well from behind the arc. They're a collective one of 13. Here's a lob for Balagay. Balagay moves across the lane, spin, and her shot is rejected nicely. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay in the possession of the Lopes, but J.C. Morton staying right with Balagay on the spin. Garla will check out. Tiana Brown checks back in as Molly Miller scrambling to find any combination offensively that'll work. For the moment, Pieta and Scott both on the bench. Driving is Brown. She'll put up the shot but wave it off. Foul happened out front. Marissa Escamilla picks up the foul. That is her second. And the Texans are out of fouls. One more, and they'll put the Lopes in the bonus with 2.58 left. Escamilla to the bench. Emily Cunningham back in to match up against Tierra Brown. Non-shooting foul. Fresh 20 on the shot clock. Caldwell wants a screen set. Vadas obliges. Caldwell gives it off for Pieta, who's back in there. Pieta start to drive, cut off, gives it out for Vadas. Dorsey went for the steal, came up empty. Vadas trying to make her pay, but the drive is too hard, and the rebound last touched by J.C. Morton of the Texans, and the Lopes get a break. So a fresh shot clock for Grand Canyon as Vadas will inbound it to the right of her own bucket. Lobs out front for Tierra Brown, now for Tiana Brown. Brown for Vadas. She'll square and fire for three. That one won't go. Lopes still over from behind the arc. Forey will bring the ball down the left side, covered by Caldwell. Looking inside as they've cleared out the paint. Now lob for Cunningham. Cunningham with two Lopes on her, Vadas and Pieta. And the foul's going to be called on the push from behind by Ben Lovatis. That's only personal foul, or only team foul number two. But you can kind of see the method to the madness, Jack, is that the Texans are spending a lot of time scrambling away from the Lopes trap out on the perimeter, waiting for backdoor cuts. First free throw by Cunningham is good. That gets the Texans starting center in the scoring column and gives the Texans their largest lead, two. Make it three as she makes them both. 21-18. Again, the Lopes have just four points in the first nearly eight minutes. Here's Brown, sees daylight, drives in, scoop up, no. Rebound off of Cunningham, goes out of bounds. Cunningham actually shoved Brown to the ground. But the Lopes will get the ball back with 2.08 left. Lopes are seeing daylight and are able to drive inside, but then the second wave of defense comes as they are starting to move. That time it doesn't as Tierra Brown with an aggressive move gets it to go. Here's a pass for Dorsey. Weak side pass for Morton. Doesn't want any part of it, make that Guillory. Gives it out front. Driving is Foray. She'll force up the shot, doesn't go. Goes out of bounds, last touch by Foray. And Foray, you could tell, was expecting cont contact and it never came. Lopes with the lineup of Ben Lavares, Tiana and Tierra Brown, Lada Pieta, and Taylor Caldwell. And as I say that, Tavia Rao gets the warm-ups off for the first time tonight. She'll check in next time it's dead. Here's Brown, another drive and another hoop. Puts it up and in, and Tierra Brown putting them on her back and gives the Lopes the lead back. Well, she stepped up big on Friday. She's stepping up big here. Arguably the two biggest points of the night coming from Tierra Brown. Now a whistle. Foul is called on Tierra Brown. It looked like Dorsey just had her feet kicked out from under her. So that's Brown's second foul, and Brown comes up kind of nursing that left leg. She'll check out. And Dorsey, they're making sure she's okay before they get back to live action as Dorsey landed. I think she landed with her chin on the floor, but apparently she's okay. And Anita Ortega, the lead official. Make sure everything's set with a minute 26 left and a fresh 30 on the Texan shot clock. 
Raul, as I mentioned, checking in. The five foot ten sophomore from Langley, British Columbia, north of the border, coming off a career high 17 point performance in that game two win over New Mexico State last weekend. Some perspiration on the floor and then some wetness on the side, so they are taking some extra time to make sure everything's covered on the baseline. Now we're ready to go. Guillory looks to inbound, does so to Cunningham, gives it off for Dorsey, who gets in front of the defense, can't get the shot to go, wanted a foul, didn't get it. Lopes trying to scramble on transition the other way. Tiana Brown has to back it out. Texans set up defensively, trailing by a point. Caldwell, fake the three, start to drive, kick in the corner. Here's Rowell's first shot, three-pointer short. Rebound ripped out of the Texans' hands by Tiana Brown. Out for Caldwell, that's short from three-point range. Morton able to get the rebound, struggling to get it out of backcourt. Here's Dorsey for Forey. They have two seconds, one second, and now a blocking foul is called as Pieta went for the steal, and that bails out Tarleton because they weren't going to get it across. Pieta pleading her case, and now they're going to call it on Rowell. So that'll be Tavia's first. And so now both teams out of fouls, but we're under a minute. So it'll still be a non-shooting foul. And Missy Wilson, I think the head coach for Tarleton, is going over saying, are you sure that that's only four team fouls? I, I have it as four. And the scoreboard for the moment has it at four. So the officiating crew coming over, Anita Ortega, Tiffany Bird, and Brian Woods double-checking something on the replay. Correction, the last follow on the low, number five. Now they go and say it was, that it was indeed on Lauda Pieta, which actually was the right call. I'm sure Molly Miller would have said, no, no, that's fine. Would have been a sigh of relief for Coach Miller if it went the other way around. <laughs> exactly, but that's that's only Lauda's first foul. And the Texans with the ball back with 45 seconds left to go and trying to take the lead back before halftime. Out front is Ibata to Dorsey, right side. Here's Forey out for Cunningham, covered by Rowell. She'll drive, put up the shot off the glass, won't go. Rebound tip to Rowell. Now the Lopes can go for the final shot of the half if they want to. Shot clock is on, but it is showing more time than the actual game clock. And Molly Miller looks at Taylor Caldwell and says, let's set up shop for one. Down to 12, now 11. Off for Jackson right side. They finally turn the shot clock off. Give it to Rowell. She'll drive, keep coming. Has it rejected by Cunningham. Three seconds, two seconds. Forey, can she get a shot off? Yes, but the shot won't go at the buzzer. One point lead at the end of one. One point lead for the Lopes at the end of two. It's been that kind of a game so far for Grand Canyon University, but they still have the lead as they head to their halftime locker room with lots to talk about. We've got lots to talk about, so we hope you'll stick around for our halftime show, which comes up after this. We have reached the intermission here at GCU Arena in the first half of this WAC doubleheader, and here's your score. Your Grand Canyon University Lopes 22, and the Tarleton State University Texans 21. Stick around for more after this on GCU TV. When you have the urge to play outside, Tire Pros wants to get you there. Offering convenience, selection, and our national roadside assistance. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. While you explore our country, let Community Tire Pros be part of your journey. We're here to give everyone something to look forward to. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. 
we made USAA insurance for members like Kate. A former Army medic made of the flexibility to handle whatever Monday has in store and tackle four things at once. So when her car got hit, she didn't worry. She simply filed a claim on her USAA app and said, I've got this. USAA insurance has made the way Kate needs it. Easy. She can even pick her payment plan, so it's easy on her budget and her life. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. USAA. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Well, Tarleton came in after snapping a seven game losing streak, a streak that saw them lose by double digits in all but one of those games, but a confidence building win last week against UTRGV in non-conference play has given them renewed confidence and they showed it in that second quarter as they have stayed right with the Lopes who came in at least a decent favorite and it's 22-21 as we are here at halftime. Jim Howell along with, with Jack O'Hara and Jack, as we look at the stats, well, yeah, we can talk about the three-pointers all day long, but we should also talk about the overall shooting for the Lopes in that second quarter. Well, it just was not pretty at all, to say the least, Jim. And you talk about Tarleton coming off that big confidence-boosting win on the road against the Vaqueros last Wednesday. You looked at this game, and you said if the Lopes get off to a hot start, they may be able to run away with it, see if the Texans' confidence would have been shaken. The Lopes go up by as many as seven in that first quarter, about halfway through that first quarter. And then Tarleton was battling the adversity you mentioned in that second quarter, taking the lead by as much as three as the Lopes were able to storm back a little bit to take the lead before the half. But it's gonna be very interesting to see as you take a look at these numbers, not pretty on both sides for the Lopes or the Texans. It'll be very interesting to see how both of these teams adapt in the second half. Yes, the Lopes have gotten eight more shot attempts, which has been one of the bread and butter elements of the Molly Miller era, but they're only shooting 30%. They're nine out of 30 from the field, and they started out the game five out of 12. So you figure it out. It was a rough second quarter, and the three-pointers, well, the three-pointer disease just kind of continues. They were two for 21 against Idaho State on Friday, and they've missed all eight of their shots from behind the arc, and it's been an equal partnership. Pretty much most of the 10 players that Molly Miller used in that first half at least fired one shot from behind the arc, and it just hasn't worked out that way. So Grand Canyon, as you can imagine, with lots to talk about in that halftime locker room as Molly Miller tries to make changes. And for that matter, Jack, we talked about the confidence building win from Tarleton coming into the game, but I think we also have to kind of talk about the hangover of the Idaho State loss for this Lopes team because they're showing a lot of the same characteristics that they did in falling behind by 20 to the Bengals. Well, you didn't see any of that in that first half of the first quarter, but then again, we talk about that media timeout about halfway through. You began to saw the cracks a little bit, Jim. Some of those common mistakes, those common errors that they've made. Again, Katie Scott, not really getting off to a hot start that she wanted to offensively. You mentioned the foul calls for Laura Pierre as well. She's flirting once again with a potential big time personal fouls. Again, you, to your credit, Coach Miller has a lot to discuss in that locker room right now as we get ready for the second half. Again, the Lopes have to adjust. They're going to have to adjust big time if they're going to want to walk away with a whack victory here tonight. Well, the Lopes aren't shooting well from three. They're not shooting well from two, but they are shooting well from one. They're four for four free throw shooting, and all of them are coming from our halftime guest. As Paul Coral, our Lopes insider, recently sat down with our red shirt sophomore and the lady bouncing back from a torn ACL that kept her out all of last year, Paul talks with Taylor Caldwell. Caldwell around the Balagay Street, gives it back to her on the pick and roll. Back to TC from the elbow, perfect. Taylor Caldwell on rebound to Caldwell. Let's see if the Lopes can use the transition. Caldwell stutter step drive, put it up, put it in. Score it, count it, foul. Send TC to the free throw line. Caldwell 
Caldwell expecting the contact. Taylor, your team is off to a great start with your help. You've been a big integral part of that with the way you affect the game in a lot of ways. You've been trapping people here on the court all the time. What's it been like for you coming off of knee surgery and missing a year? Uh, it's been great. I didn't know how I was going to do in this type of system with this type of intensity first coming off, but it's been great so far. You spent a lot of time here in the offseason dedicated to, to rehabbing and get, getting back to where you were. What was that like uh, psychologically and athletically to, to get back to where you were? Um, mentally, it was pretty tough. I mean, it was hard. No one was here, so I was by myself. It was just me, Terika, and Justin, the physical therapist on staff. So we put in a lot of hard work. It was hard, but it was very rewarding. How much did that come back? Because you guys went hard in the summer once the team started coming back for workouts, putting in Molly Miller's new system. Did that sort of help you hit the ground running when you just went all out right away, full court stuff? Yeah, definitely. So I just started running like a week or two before um, everyone came to campus. So it was good to get back on the court and get into things. We took it slow um, with COVID and all. We were like limited in what we could do, but it was good to get back on the court, especially just starting out. You not only got back to where you're, you're probably a better player than you were in the past too. I mean, I think you've had career highs in just about every category. What What is this system doing for you as a player? Yeah, I think this system really highlights my strengths um, on the court. I mean, I like the trap and the aggressive defense. I'm a defensive player first. Um, so it was just really great and it really complements my style of play also. Is it cool, you know, Molly Miller wants to take this program to another level and get to NCAA tournaments. You guys are already making an imprint nationally, leading the nation in turnovers. How is it to be a part of something like that? Uh, it's special, man, it's special, especially with the coaching staff and this being their first year. I know there's been a lot of doubts among the um, conference, but we've been exceeding. And then internally, what's the culture like with you guys? Because you've got a lot of newcomers and then a few of you returnees too. What's the, how's that melded together? Um, it's uh, welded together great. I mean, we all enjoy each other. We all have fun. We're all friends. There's no conflicts on the team or anything like that. So we all just hang out and have a good time, especially if there's like a really hard practice coming up. Um, we really all just come together to get through. All right. Well, we're happy to see you back on the court, TC. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. As a kid, I always dreamed of being a Division I athlete. GCU supported that dream, and they also allowed me to get an education. So when I came to GCU, I was able to transfer enough credits in to fast track my education. So I graduated in three years with a master's, and I did it debt free because I had athletic and academic scholarships. I'm Mackenzie, and I earned my MBA from Grand Canyon University. There's the thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. How can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing GIFs to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions GIF Collection. Now I'm so happy. While you explore our country, let Community Tire Pros be part of your journey. We're here to give everyone something to look forward to. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you.
Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. When you have the urge to play outside, Tire Pros wants to get you there. Offering convenience, selection, and our national roadside assistance. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. Time to take a look at our upcoming schedule, and it's brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance, the way insurance should be. And yes, you see right there in the middle, Jack, that the fall sports are being resurrected as we speak. Well, things are about to pick up in a big way, Jim. And as you can see, women's soccer home opener taking on the Arizona Wildcats at home this Thursday, February 4th, 7 p.m. You can catch that game right here on GCU TV. But never fear, there is also a ton of basketball coming your way. This is the first of a four-game homestand for women's basketball. Tarleton will be back here tomorrow night at 6 p.m. before the Lopes take on UTRGV. The Vaqueros coming into town, Lope country, Friday and Saturday, February 5th and February 6th. Now, keep in mind, you can catch tomorrow's and Friday's games, both here on GCU TV. We'll be on the air starting with the pregame show at 555 both nights, but then Saturday night's game moves to Fox 10 Extra as our A-team is on the call. That's Barry Butel, that's Scott Williams, and that's Kate Longworth. Kate will have the pregame show starting at 530 on Fox 10 Extra, and then Barry and Scott will take you through with that 6 p.m. tip-off. Again, that's this Saturday night on Fox 10 Extra. Just about ready for the second half. We're coming back with it on the other side of this break, 22-21. Lopes on top of visiting Tarleton right here on GCU TV. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. How can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. One point game as we get ready for the second half with Jack O'Hara. Jim Howe back here at GC Arena. We took a look at some of the team stats early in the halftime show. But individually, nobody in double figures. But the bench scoring has been a big key for Charlton. Marissa Escamilla off the bench with eight points. Nobody with more than three, but Misty Wilson has used eight players and seven of them have scored. For the Lopes, not nearly as much balance. Tierra Brown with that late surge in the first half winds up leading the Lopes and scoring with eight points. Taylor Caldwell with six and Lada Pieta with four. But when we're talking about bench scoring, Charlton bench has outscored the Lopes bench and Molly Miller has used five players off the pine, 12-0. So that is a stat you know they're gonna wanna work on 
And remember, the stats brought to you by Copper State Credit Union. Copper State Credit Union founded on the principle of people helping people. Lopes with a one-point edge, and they will start off this second half with the basketball in the same five that started the game, namely Lada Pieta, Taylor Caldwell, Nana Jackson, Katie Scott, and Tiara Brown. And we look at it, and we see that, yes, all 22 points scored by the Lopes starters, but only two of them, Jack, from Katie Scott. That's right. And you talk about this Tarleton offense. I think it's very impressive watching them play in that first half. You know, there's not necessarily a star on this starting five, but you mentioned the bench role players so far to this point. A bunch of scrappy players making the most of their situation. KD Scott trying to get into it as Brown misses the shot. Scott misses the follow, but the Lopes get it back. Fresh 20 on the shot clock. There's Pieta in the lane. That one rolls around and off. Brown swoops in, can't get the follow. The Lopes had four shots at the basket and couldn't get the lid off of it, and the Texans will take it the other way. And more of the same from what we saw in the second quarter, Jim. The Lopes just unable to come away with their own opportunities. They are rebounding their own shots, but again, just unable to come away with the bucket. Lopes now 9 for 34 from the field and just have not been able to find the range since the first quarter. They had a 12-5 lead and just have not been able to do much since. Now going for the steal, Caldwell sets the table and Katie Scott comes and finishes the turnover. That's turnover number 13, make it 14 for the Texans today, but the Lopes have 11 of their own. Here's Nana Jackson on the drive. Dorsey reaches in, gets part of the ball, but gets part of the body. And so that'll be personal foul number one on the Texans leading scorer on the season, Ayanna Dorsey. So the Lopes will get it on the non-shooting foul and a fresh 20 on the shot clock. We played a minute, still scoreless for both teams here in the third. Pieta will throw it way out front and Tierra Brown will reel it in. Brown almost traveled as Dorsey almost went for that steal. Here's Pieta, shot clock down to a dozen. Drives around 4A, puts it up, shot won't go off the glass and the rebound belongs to Forey. Same five that started the game for Misty Wilson as well, namely Emily Cunningham, Ayanna Dorsey, Lucy Benson, Candon Forey, and the lady with the basketball, Caitlin Guillory. Here's Dorsey, try to get it inside for Cunningham, converging, both Brown and Caldwell get a piece of it, knock it out of bounds. 14 on the Texan shot clock, as Forey will inbound to the left of her own basket. Here's Benson out on the side, tried to get it out front for Dorsey. Jackson went for the steal, but knocks it out of bounds. So the Lopes getting more active in the passing lanes. But the Texans still with the ball and 11 to get a shot off. Corey looking, waiting. Gets it for Dorsey on the side. Turns, faces the hoop, starts the dribble. Corey with six on the clock, drives around Jackson, throw it out for Dorsey, got an open look for three, and she got it to go. That's only the second three of the night for either team, and Dorsey and Guillory responsible for those two, and the Texans have the lead back. Scott has it knocked away as she went up for the shot. She looks at the referee asking for a foul, doesn't get it, but it goes out of bounds, and the Lopes will keep the basketball. Already we've had seven lead changes and no ties. Make it eight lead changes as Tierra Brown. Make that the first tie, I should say, as Brown gets the short jumper to go. We're knotted up at 24, and Brown's in double figures with 10. Here's Dorsey for Benson. Benson will scramble to get it across that midcourt line. Dorsey feeling it. She'll put up the three and get it. And once again, the Lopes didn't have a hand in her face. And Dorsey, who averages nearly 14 points a game, suddenly has eight points on the game. That pass stolen away. Forey with the quick hands. And it's a three-on-one break. Dorsey pass, low block. Faking, shooting, and having it knocked away is Escamilla, who just checked in. And she'll head to the line. And the Lopes slow to get back defensively. And they pay the price. Well, this could be the momentum shift that the Texans were looking for. You mentioned Dorsey. If there's a juggernaut in this offense, it's her. And she seems to have found it from long distance with those last two shots to put the Texans up by three, finding a big play there, finding an open window, taking advantage of the Lopes defense once again, looking to again have their largest lead of the night. The largest lead of the night so far to this point has been three for the Texans, trying to separate themselves. First free throw is good by Escamilla. 
Escamilla gave him that spark in that first half off the bench. She leads him in scoring with nine, and she'll try to add to this lead. Scott checks out. Kennedy Short's making her first appearance in the Lopes lineup of the second half. Next free throw, rolls around and off, and Brown tracks down the rebound. Lopes trailing by four. Brown will drive. Nobody puts a body on her, and so she'll just take it the rest of the way. Coast to coast for Tierra Brown. And now a steal. Jackson with the quick hands. Lopes have it in the front court with a chance to tie. Cross court for Lauda Pieta. Pieta waits for a short screen. Uses it, goes to the baseline. Tried for the hook pass, and Escamilla was ready for it. Makes the steal, and now looked like she double dribbled, got away with it, gives it to Benson. The shot won't go. Lopes come the other way after dodging a bullet. We played three minutes here in the third quarter, and the Lopes now looking up at the Texans on the scoreboard. Nana Jackson waits for a screen, drives in the paint, pushes off, got away with it for a split second, but no. Offensive foul called on the other side by lead official Anita Ortega, and that will be personal foul number one on Jackson. Well, that's been Quite a matchup so far, Dorsey versus Jackson. And if you're using nicknames, that's Yaya versus Nana. Full court pressure defense by the Lopes. Benson looks, gets it for Dorsey. Deanna Brown is in there, almost got the steal. Dorsey inching out of backcourt. Now Shorts collapses, but they're able to get it to Benson. Now for 4E, we'll slow it up out front. They give it out for Dorsey. She'll fire another three, and she got it. She's three for three here in this third quarter, and it's a five-point Tarleton lead. Well, that was really long distance calling, Jim. Wow. Here's Brown out from Jackson. She'll drive inside, and right now, it's the Dorsey versus Tierra show, as it's Brown making layups on one end and Dorsey making trays on the other. Three-point Texans lead. Escamilla in the forecourt. Forey comes to get it. Kennedy Shorts has the defensive assignment on her as we move under six minutes here in the third. Here's Dorsey again. Oh, she's human. This one won't go. And Brown squares for the defensive rebound. Taylor called well down the left side. Cross-court pass for Tiana Brown. Fake the three. Dorsey running at her. Instead brings it back out front. Tiana wants to work one-on-one, -on -one. drives in, puts up the shot, no. Shorts keeping it alive, goes to the side, and it's tapped out of bounds. Referees confer, Lopes basketball. Wholesale changes coming from the Texans. Emily Cunningham, J.C. Morton, and Haley Ibarra. But Dorsey's gonna stay in the ball game. Why wouldn't you keep her in there with the hot hand she's had? She has all three field goals for the Texans in this second half, all from behind the arc. Here's Tierra Brown back to the basket. Start to drive, goes to the right side, now brings it back out front, almost threw it away. Jackson skies to get it, now works one-on-one, -on -one, drives in, high off the glass! Good Number shot for Nana! Jackson. So the Lopes starting to show some signs of offensive life. They're within one. Cunningham able to break the press as she comes down the right side. Now Shorts makes her stop the dribble and makes her throw it away. Tierra Brown forcing the turnover. Here comes Brown, stutter step, drives in, kicks for Jackson. Jackson scissors through the defense, kick for Caldwell, passes up the open shot. Here's Jackson out front, still plenty of time to get a shot off. Now has it knocked away, but Shorts goes to the floor, saves it for the Lopes. Here's Jackson on the drive, puts up the shot, no, but she was bumped and fouled, and you can already see the electricity starting to make a difference in the offensive end for the Lopes as Jackson will head to the line after the timeout. Timeout on the floor, 4.45 left to go third quarter, and here comes GCU. It's Tarleton 31, GCU 30. Keep it here for more exciting Lopes women's basketball on GCU TV. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not so amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy.
How can you describe Whataburger's honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich at Whataburger. Are you looking for the right place to help advance your education? Well, Grand Canyon University has all the right tools and programs to help you find your purpose. For more information on what Grand Canyon University has to offer or to enroll, visit gcu.edu. Well, the Lopes are still only shooting 32% from the field, 13 out of 41, Jack, but we are seeing some signs of life on the offensive end for the first time in two quarters for GCU. Yeah, we look like we were seeing more of the same from that second quarter out of the get-go here in the second half from the Lopes. They were rebounding their own shots, but unable to finish. Tarleton State looked like they were going to pick up some momentum, but it looks like momentum isn't going to be a thing in this second half for either two teams. The Lopes coming out of the gate strong now, looking to take the lead again. Lopes with the basketball on a non-shooting foul. They didn't give her continuation. Instead, it's Caldwell out front yeah. for three. Seems like forever I've been able to yell that, and and it's also the first time in a while that the Lopes have had the lead back at 33-31. Lopes missed their first eight three-pointers, but Caldwell gets the lid off, and that's TC's second field goal. Ibarra struggling with the defense as she goes way out front, has to get rid of it, and then throws it off the leg of Caldwell. TC saw it coming, but couldn't do anything about it. Nine on the Texan shot clock, as Morton will inbound it out front. Morton looking, gets it in the backcourt for Ibarra. Now Jackson pressuring her. Five, now four, does she see the clock? I don't think she does. Now two, now one, they're not gonna get a shot off. 30 second shot clock violation and that was all night Deja Jackson. So the Lopes now trying to take advantage of it here with a lineup of shorts, Jackson, Caldwell and Tierra and Tiana, the Brown sisters. Here's Tierra. Tierra, who's kind of started this. She'll drive in and has it ripped out of her hands as she knocks down Escamilla. And to add insult to injury, that will be an offensive foul. And unfortunately, that's the way the Texans could take Brown out of the offense. That's her third. So the Texans will have a chance to tie it up. We've only been tied once. We've had seven, make it eight lead changes. And Ven Lavaris is going to come in as Molly Miller does not want to see that fourth foul on Tierra Brown's ledger anytime soon. So Brown to the bench. Caldwell went for the steal, almost got it. Now the Lopes converge, and Ibarra has it knocked away, but she goes down. She and Caldwell both in a heap as Caldwell was coming from behind. It goes out of bounds and no harm, no foul. Just Texans basketball. So Morton looks, she'll lob inside, somehow gets to Escamilla and she scores. That ball had to be absolutely on the money and it was. Shorts with good defense, but to no avail. We're tied at 33. Jackson on the drive, cut off on the baseline, double team, throws out for Shorts. Back to Jackson, now she's got an open look for three! Well, the disease was terrible in the first half. Suddenly Caldwell and Jackson hoping it's contagious with back-to-back -back trays. Lopes up three. Caldwell went for the steal out front, almost came up with it, goes out of bounds. You can feel that momentum shift, Jack O'Hara. Uh, the downtown game is back and in full effect. I missed that three-point call of yours. We haven't been able to use it at all tonight. <laughs> The Lopes, two of 10, another lob pass. This one, not quite as crisp. And that goes past Escamilla out of bounds. They went to the well once too often. And because that was not touched, the Lopes don't have to go the length of the floor. They instead will be able to inbound it in the front court, but Misty Wilson's gonna call a timeout as she senses what we sense up here, that there is a distinct shift in momentum courtesy of a 10 to two run by the Lopes. And that 10 points has been scored in the span of just over three and a half minutes, Jack. And that's a big contrast 
to how it was the 13 minutes prior to that offensively for Grand Canyon. And we talk about that defense creating plays for the offense. They're taking advantage now, and like we mentioned, that three-point field goal percentage has gone way up, at least the last three shots. The Lopes finally connecting from long distance, and again, it should be an interesting thing for uh, Misty, Missy's team for Tarleton State, as well as their offense looks to it once again. They're only down by three. The Lopes looking for an opportunity here to once again give themselves major separation going into the final quarter of play here on their home court, looking to again set the tone going into tomorrow night's game. And the Lopes are providing themselves second shots even when they don't hit because they're 15 of 43 from the field, but Tarleton has 15 less shot attempts. And you can credit the fact that the Lopes have not only out-rebounded Tarleton 28 to 19, 13 of those 28 are offensive boards. Jack, you and I were talking about at halftime that the reason they had so many offensive boards in that first half was because they couldn't hit shots. Here, they're not only getting shots to fall, but they're able to crash the boards when they go awry. And if this keeps up, Jim, I wouldn't be shocked to see a major separation from this Lopes offense looking to again make matters worse for Tarleton, trying to expand that three-point lead. To your credit, they have out-defended Tarleton tonight. They have out-rebounded them. And again, now that they're hitting their shots, hopefully it'll stay the same, and hopefully the Lopes will again add to this lead, trying to at least largen the margin by more than three. Well, and they're trying to return Tarleton to their previous state because before they scored 79, points in that big road win at UTRGV last week. They'd lost seven straight, they'd lost nine out of 10, and by an average of nearly 20 points per contest, they had only scored 56 points a game during that seven game losing streak. Now they try to get it in and they do on perfection. Caldwell putting it where only Katie Scott could get it and Scott will lay it up and in. 38-33, this is the largest lead the Lopes have had since the first quarter and Katie Shorts Kennedy Shorts almost forced another turnover. It'll be Texans basketball on the side. Largest lead of the game for either team was seven. That was when the Lopes led 12 to five and proceeded to give up the next eight points. Ibata trying to get rid of it, pressured by both Tiana Brown and Kennedy Shorts, and on the pass off, a pushing foul called on Shorts, and that is her third. Four team fouls now on the Lopes with 2.45 left to go in the third. So that's the last foul to give. J.C. Morton will inbound to the left of her own basket with a fresh 20 on the Tarleton shot clock. Looking, lobs it for Escamilla. Escamilla covered by Shorts one-on-one -on -one for the moment. Start to drive, stop at the free throw line. Give it off for J.C. Morton, now for Dorsey. Dorsey, after being hot in the first three minutes, has been quiet ever since. Benson to Morton, she'll fire a three. That one's off. Benson fighting for the rebound. It's tapped out of bounds. Scott went over the top and knocked it out. So 2.26 on the game clock, but that will reset the Tarleton Texans shot clock. That's only their fourth offensive rebound of the game. Here's Escamilla, quick ball movement. Ibarra gets it in for Benson. Benson to the free throw line. Escamilla, open look, got it. And Escamilla continuing to power the way for Tarleton off the bench. She's got 13 points, and that leads all but Tierra Brown on the floor. Shorts almost lose the basketball, and she's going to. She tried to throw it to Caldwell, was anticipating Dorsey was going to steal, tried to catch it, and instead traveled. Turnover number 15 for the Lopes. And there's turnover number 19 for Tarleton as Benson throws an incomplete pass. Dorsey faked out all nine players that weren't her on the floor, including her teammate. So the Lopes will inbound in the front court as we hit the two minute mark of the third quarter. Been a resurgent one for the home team. Let's see if they can hold it for the last two minutes. Jackson. Out front, can't get it to Scott. Instead, she'll take it herself, but the shot off the glass won't go. Too far underneath. Here's Ibarra. Maneuvering her way past Shorts. Gives it off for Morton. Morton now throws another errant pass. Goes to the midcourt line. Jackson able to save it, but Jackson wanted to outlet it. Couldn't do it. And then as she tried to get it in the backcourt to Scott, it is slapped back to her, and a timeout is going to be called by Molly Miller to avoid any possible turnover. So the Lopes are getting to the loose balls, 
It's now a question of what they're doing with it, and they're finally starting to create points off turnovers, something they couldn't do in half number one. And I think this is an excellent timeout for Molly Miller, as well as Tarleton trying to get back on their feet, trying to slow things down a little bit, heading into the fourth quarter. Again, the Lopes only up by three. Tarleton hanging in there by the skin of their teeth at the moment. But again, you talk about Escamilla, 13 points off the bench. It's been those role players for the Texans that have kept them in this game. Wouldn't be shocked to see them pull something out of their hat late as well. 20 turnovers so far for the Texans. And the points off turnovers, the Lopes have only been able to convert those into 13 points. But they're starting to see more opportunities as they get more aggressive offensively. So Molly Miller will send back out Kennedy Shorts, Taylor Caldwell, Tiana Brown, Katie Scott, and Nana Jackson with a minute 33 left to go here in quarter number three. And the Lopes, after only scoring eight points in that second quarter, have come back with 16 here in the third. Caldwell had it poked away, but retrieves. Tiana Brown with the ball outside the right arc. Goes away from a Kennedy short screen, gives it back to Shorts. Shorts start to dribble drive, kick for Caldwell, passes up an open look for three, instead dribbles in, has it knocked away, five on the shot clock. Got to do something with it, TC. Give it to Scott, and they're not going to get a shot off. Well, the Texans able to force the turnover that the Lopes stemmed on Tarleton a couple of minutes ago. 64 seconds left to go as Molly Miller will get both Lada Pieta and Tierra Brown back into the lineup. Remember, Brown playing with those three personal fouls, so let's see if Tarleton head coach Misty Wilson tries to key on that. Escamilla now gets it to a cutting Ibata. Ibata retrieves behind the back, moves in the lane, gives it off for Forey, and now the Lopes get set defensively. Under a minute left to go in the third quarter. It's been a good one for the home team. Here's Dorsey out front. Picked up by Short. Start to drive. Force up a shot off the glass. Won't go. Rebound controlled by the Lopes. And Shorts with good defense to force Dorsey into a shot where she wanted a foul call and didn't get it. Now as Jackson tries to drive through defenders, has it knocked out of her hands? Almost looked like it went off of Nana. But instead, the referees confer, and it'll stay on this side of the floor. 15 seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Pieta out for Brown. Brown will drive on Benson, spin, hang, score. Tierra Brown has been automatic in the middle quarters. 14 of her 16 points have come since the first quarter. Now scrambling for the loose ball. Kennedy Shorts caught with her proverbial hand in the cookie jar. That'll be a reach-in foul. That puts the Texans in the bonus. And now Shorts will have to head to the bench with her fourth personal. So Dorsey will make the long trip down to the Tarleton free throw line. Tarleton has not had a point for a couple of minutes. And Dorsey, who is now in double figures with 11 points, make it 12. As she makes the first free throw, 10 of those coming here in this third quarter and nine of them from behind the arc trying to make it a one possession game free throw in and out goes back in and Dorsey now right on her season average of 13 a game as she checks out shot clock is off so Molly Miller wanting to go for the final shot of the quarter will get Katie Scott back in there to join Brown, Brown, Jackson and Pieta Pieta will bring it across the time stripe on the right side, and Scott standing next to her. Here's Katie out front for Pieta. Again, shot clock is off. Scott will back away. She's going to fire a 15-footer and get it. Well, now the Texans will have a chance to get the last shot. Nine seconds to do it. Forey out of backcourt, gives it off for Cunningham. Cunningham with five seconds, double team, throws it out. Escamilla fires a three and gets it. And that's the way the third quarter is going to end. As Scott went for the early shot and got it, but the Texans are able to counter and get within two. We are through three quarters of basketball in the first half of this whack double hitter, and we got a good one. Here's your score, the GCU Lopes 42, the Tarleton Texans 40. Keep it here for more exciting Lopes women's basketball on GCU TV.
Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer. Jim Howell, Jack O'Hara back here at GCU Arena. We've got a nip and tuck battle as we've had most of the night. In fact, it was 22-21 Lopes at the end of three, and each team almost equaled that output in the third quarter. The Lopes outscored them 20 to 19. It's a two point game. And here's Escamilla as the Texans have the ball to start it. Cunningham going for the lead, but the three pointer winds up wedged in between the glass and the rim. And that will send the held ball the other way. So the Lopes now shooting 38% for the game. And that's the highest it's been since early in the second quarter. Now the Lopes have to take that newfound confidence and work with it here. Lob over the top, Brown able to control it, at least save it, gets it out to her sister Tiana. 13 on the shot clock, Jackson outside the left arc. Start to dribble drive on Ibotta. Throws it out for Pieta, open for a moment, instead drives inside, puts up the Whoa, little leap and leaner and gets it. A lot of Pieta's first scoring from the, since the first quarter and it couldn't have come at a better time. Here's Cunningham breaking the press down the right side. Dribbles, throws it out front for Ibotta. For the moment, Ayanna Dorsey on the Texans bench. Here's Caitlin Guillory out front. Throws it for Forey. Forey will drive, gets up in the air with nowhere to go, and Pieta will make her pay for it. Tips the turnover to Jackson. Lopes trying to make it a six-point lead. Out for Brown. Brown, one bounce. They're challenging her to take the three. She passes it up. Here's her sister, Tiana. Tiana spreading the floor. Give it to Jackson on the right side. Looking in for Katie Scott, who now comes high post to get it. Scott starts to work on Cunningham. The drive, the shot, Katie the score. Scott. Katie Scott starting to get more active. She's got eight points, six of them in the second half. Guillory breaks the press, but has to wait for her teammates. Lob over the top. It goes to Ex Escamilla, and she'll score. Well, both teams with good lob passes, and Escamilla has certainly been the benefactor of it. For the Texans, she leads the way with 18 points. Keep in mind, Escamilla and Dorsey responsible for all 19 Texans points between them in that third quarter. Jackson with the ball outside. Now for Tierra Brown. Brown start to drive, gets the first step on Cunningham. Score and count it, foul. Send her to the free throw line, and that was all she wrote once she got the first step. Well, Tiara Brown continuing to open some eyes on that coaching staff, on that bench for the Lopes. Make that 18 points, maybe 19 here and counting for number 24, playing a pivotal role in this second half for the Lopes. Again, three personal fouls. You got to watch that. It would be smart of the Tarleton defense to really step up and take care of that, but Tiara Brown being the X factor for this Lopes offense as of late. Who says that Hammy has given her trouble? It's a no tough injury. Sign. That's right. It's something that's bothered her since the preseason, but when she gets when she gets rolling, it's Katie bar the door. Three-point play converted by Brown, and then Brown, after Pieta knocked the ball away, actually wound up stepping on the ball inadvertently. And that foul is going to be called on Lada Pieta. That is only her second. One of the things you were saying during that last stop in play, Jack, that foul trouble was a big factor against New Mexico State and Idaho for GCU. Not so much in this game. Shorts with four, Tierra Brown with three, nobody else with more than two. Here's a pass to Benson who spins inside, crashes into Jackson. Nana takes the charge. Offensive foul, Lucy Benson. And Jackson went down very hard and is slow to get up, but she seems to be okay. 
Well, the Lopes starting to get to those spots defensively that they weren't getting to in the first half. Turnover number 22 for the visitors. Referees conferring, namely Tiffany Bird and Anita Ortega. Now, wait a minute. They're going to overturn the call. I think what they may be saying is that the foul happened inside the circle, underneath the basket. So now Tiffany Bird's going to go over. I think since she had the best vantage point of the three-person officiating crew, and she's going to see whether or not that's correct. Benson is setting up at the line. And they are indeed going to call, change the call and call it on Jackson. So no offensive foul. And because Jackson was inside the circle, it's a block instead of a charge. You gotta take advantage of this if you're Lucy Benson. A lot of pressure now being put on number one here to make these two shots. And the first free throw is not good. Texans normally are a pretty good free throw shooting team. They shoot just under 70%. So trying to make it a two possession game with the second free throw, which she does. 49-43. Lopes on top and have the basketball. Two and a half minutes gone by here in the fourth quarter. Backdoor pass on the money, but Jackson double team. Out front, Vadas alone, three pointer, no. And the rebound belongs to Haley Ibata of the Texans. Ibata being bothered by Pieta, dribbles through two defenders, gives it off for Dorsey who's back in there after a breather to start this fourth quarter. Here's Escamilla. Left side, Guillory. Lob over the top, and Benson can't get to it. Oh, blocking foul called. Converging was Tierra Brown, and the bump is going to send Benson possibly to the line, although that won't, that won't be continuation. That's not the bad news, though. That's personal foul number four on Brown, who has 19 points, and just on cue, here comes Katie Scott to replace her. Not good news for the Lopes. So Brown checks out at the 7-13 mark. Let's see how long Molly Miller can go without her. And now a touch foul called on Pieta. And suddenly the Lopes at the 7-10 mark are out of fouls. One more and they will put the Texans in the bonus the rest of the way. Ibotta with the ball on the non-shooting foul out front. Jackson pressuring her. Now that pass knocked away, goes out of bounds. It'll be Lopes basketball credit Lada Pieta with the weak side help. So the Lopes forced the turnover. And Pieta comes down, taking a glance at her head coach to get the play. Molly Miller's home court record the last three years. Drury in here, 92 and five. Trying to protect it here. Here's Caldwell out to Vadas. She'll fire another three. That one's off the mark. And Vadas kind of pressing to get that one. Saving it from going out of bounds, Cunningham. Here's a lead pass. Here's Dorsey. And as she started to get Vadas up in the air, she picked up the pivot foot. Traveling violation, Lopes basketball. So Vadas keys the turnover. Tavia Rowell checking in for only the second time tonight. Vadas will head to the bench. So the lineup is Scott, Jackson, Caldwell, Pieta, and Tavia Rowell. Brown and Shorts both on the bench with four fouls. Pieta to Rowell. They've cleared out the lane with Scott at the high post. Caldwell to the left side. Cross court for Rowell. Will she take it? Decides not to. Goes around the screen, give it back to Scott on the pick and roll, put up the shot, no. Rebound scramble, and it's picked up by Escamilla. Texans with the basketball, dodging the bullet. Four minutes gone by, fourth quarter, Texans trail by six. Caden Forey, out front for Dorsey. Jackson not leaving her this time. Give it to Benson. Here's Ibotta on the right side. Escamilla being fronted by Pieta. Here's Forey as she bumps into her own player and a foul is going to be called. And I think the referees are going to confer because the official who made the call, Brian Woods, was shielded from the play. Forty 
banged into her own player, but they're going to say Katie Scott pushed her into it. And that will indeed put the Pex Texans in the bonus for the remaining 544. Well, that is certainly a game changer, Jim, and a kind of a controversial call, like you said, kind of blocked from seeing the entirety of that last play, and now you put Tarleton on the line every time the Lopes put together a foul. Definitely a big game changer for this Tarleton offense, down by six. Benson one for two, those free throws just a moment ago, and that one rolls around and drops through. Molly Miller for the moment staying with this lineup at the 544 mark. Trying to make it a four point deficit. Free throw good. Benson now with five points and the Texans back within 49-45. Rowell in the corner, fires a three off the back of the iron, but the rebound touched by Caldwell goes to Jackson. Back to Rowell, fresh shot clock. Rowell now being hounded in the corner by Escamilla and Woods right there calls the block. That's personal foul number three on the Texans leading score on the night, Marissa Escamilla. Team foul number three, non-shooting foul for the Lopes. Caldwell on the side, out for Rowell. Rowell cross court, Pieta alone, 14 footer, got it. And Lada Pieta looking very comfortable from the field, but she hasn't put up that many shots. She's only four for 10. Full court pressure employed. Escamilla able to get it across. Now that's stolen away by Caldwell. Oh, by her lonesome TC to the hoop for two. What a play as Caldwell went from behind and Misty Wilson sees enough. Time out, Texans. 4.58 left to go in this one, and could the Lopes be setting up to run away with it? It's GCU with their largest lead. Lopes 53, Texans 45, right here on GCU TV. We made USAA insurance for members like Kate. A former Army medic made of the flexibility to handle whatever Monday has in store and tackle four things at once. So when her car got hit, she didn't worry. She simply filed a claim on her USAA app and said, I've got this. USAA insurance is made the way Kate needs it. Easy. She can even pick her payment plan, so it's easy on her budget and her life. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. USAA. As a kid, I always dreamed of being a Division I athlete. GCU supported that dream, and they also allowed me to get an education. So when I came to GCU, I was able to transfer enough credits in to fast track my education. So I graduated in three years with a master's, and I did it debt free because I had athletic and academic scholarships. I'm Mackenzie, and I earned my MBA from Grand Canyon University. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Jim Howell, Jack O'Hara back here at GC Arena. The Lopes have very quietly gotten their largest lead of the game at 53-45. But Jack, what has kept the Texans in this? Because despite the fact they've committed 24 turnovers and despite the fact they've gotten 22 less shot attempts up than the Lopes, you look at the fact that their bench scoring, their bench has outscored the Lopes bench, which is normally a staple of a Molly Miller offense, 20 to nothing. And most of that has come from Marissa Escamilla. I was going to say, Jim, look no further than Marissa Escamilla with her 18 points off the bench. It was Emily Cunningham with 20 points off the bench last Wednesday against UTRGV. Like we were saying, a ton of role players offensively for Tarleton, keeping them in this game. But it looks like the Lopes defense looking to step up in a big way here. And there's a steal right on cue. Kennedy Shorts comes down with Forey to beat. Reverse layup. Got it! What a play by Kennedy Shorts. First scoring off the bench for the Lopes tonight, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Forey finally gets the inbound, give it to Benson. Here's Ibata, looked like she carried the ball, got away with it. Ibata lobs inside, there's Escamilla, puts up the shot, won't go, Jackson made her change it, and Nottam will make her earn it from the free throw line. That's personal foul number three on Jackson, and the Lopes over the limit. So now Escamilla, who is three for four from the free throw line tonight. With two huge free throws at the 429 mark as the Texans, who have been really beleaguered, they have, as we've mentioned a couple of times during the game, 
They normally get off to fast starts, and then they tend to run out of gas down the stretch, and they're starting to see this Lopes lead grow. First free throw, good by Escamilla. Next free throw, also good. 20 points off the bench for the native of Texas, hailing from Burnett. 55-47. And the Lopes with an eight-point edge. Can afford to use a little clock here. Caldwell, the drive on the left side. Keeps coming, cut off at the baseline. Out for Pieta. Pieta will give it to Scott at the high post. Scott, start to drive. She'll drive around the defender, Escamilla, all the way to the hoop, can't get the shot to go. Rebound, scramble on the floor. Shorts can't get it, but then on the steal, Shorts comes up, or Scott comes up with it, but a whistle and a foul. Backcourt foul on Pieta. That's her fourth. Fouls now quickly adding up. Four minutes exactly left to go fourth quarter. Both teams heading the other way to the Texans free throw line. And this is exactly how this Tarleton offense has been able to stay in this game, at least in the last few minutes, Jim, because they're going to the line every time they're fouled and they're hitting their free throw attempts. 14 of 18, now 15 for 19 from the field tonight. Well, and you mentioned they're staying in it that way, not just by the fact that they are 15 of 19 now, and as Morton makes it 15 of 20, but the Lopes have only attempted five free throws all night. Escamilla got the loose ball, forces it up. It's knocked out of bounds, but the Texans will keep it. And keep in mind, four of those made free throws. They're five for five. Four of those came in the first quarter from Taylor Caldwell. They have shot one free throw since. Lob over the top to Escamilla. Fake, shoot, score. Marissa Escamilla has been on fire. 22 points off the bench, and the Texans inching their way back into it. This 10-point lead for the Lopes cut in half. Time starting to slowly become a factor. Caldwell driving through the defense to the left side. Keeps the dribble going. Pieta now gets it, drives, puts it up, puts it in. The patented Pieta drive. Perfect timing. 10 points for Lauda. 57-50. Steal. Pieta somehow able to get it, and then it's poked out of her hands, out of bounds. What a play by the Spaniard. Laura Piera like a thief in the night, coming out of nowhere for that last steal immediately after putting up the board. And just like that, once again, it looks like Misty Wilson is going to call another. It looks like the Lopes are going to call a timeout here up by seven. Again, like you said, time beginning to play a factor here up by seven. Coach Molly Miller wants to make sure everyone is on the same page trying to add to this lead. 30-second timeout. The Lopes will have it in their front court. So Molly Miller wants to set a design play that can give the Lopes a nine-point or possibly even 10-point lead. Largest lead of the game for the Lopes, 10. They had that about two minutes ago, and then the Texans cut it to five. Keep in mind, the Texans have never led by more than five. And that was midway through the third quarter. So the Lopes come out with Pieta, Scott, Shorts, Jackson, and the lady who will inbound in the corner, Taylor Caldwell. Two timeouts left for each team. No more media timeouts. So left to fend for themselves. Caldwell has it. Gets it for Pieta out front. Fresh 30 on the shot clock. Let's see how much they use. Scott, start to drive, spin, double team. Lob inside their shorts. Puts it up and in. What an assist pass. Shorts with four points on two field goals. Both of them on acrobatic reverse layups in this fourth quarter. Nine point Lopes lead. Can they hold on as we're under three minutes? Forey out front, looking for somebody to get it to. Coming out to get it is Morton. Now for Forey, shot clock at 11. Here's Benson on the drive. Spin, double team, throws it away, falling down. Out to Forey, three pointer is flat. And the rebound belongs to the Lopes, Donna Jackson. Now they can use some clock. And Molly Miller on cue says, hold up. So Caldwell will yo-yo the ball as she takes the dribble to the right side. Stop with 17 on the shot clock, 2.22 left to go in the game. Pieta, low block Caldwell, scoop it for Shorts from the free throw line, banks it in! Kennedy Shorts, 11 point game. Again, the Lopes continuing to press and the press has been much more effective in this second half. 
Ibotta fumbles, gets it back, stop the dribble. Lob over the top, there it is, Escamilla, but she was too far underneath. Shot didn't go, hit the bottom of the rim, and the Lopes have it, and we're under two minutes, and suddenly, time very much in the back pocket of GCU. Caldwell straight away for shorts. Lopes in no hurry. Now for Scott. Scott start to drive, hand off Caldwell, shot clock at 10. Caldwell moves in, but her lob pass knocked away from Shorts. Stolen away by Forey. Now the Texans have got to have a hoop with a minute and a half left. Forey down the left side. They'll get it in the corner. Here's Abata, open look, three-pointer no. Rebound, slapped by Benson to the side. Jackson will let it go, and now they say it's Texans basketball. So Tarleton gets a break with a minute 22 left and they'll reset the shot clock to 20. But the Lopes with their largest lead of the night at 11. Inbound Forey, trying to get it in for Cunningham, knocked away, goes to Benson, into Cunningham, her shot won't go, but it's a hack and a foul. Foul is on Caldwell, that is her third. Cunningham, who has not gone to the line in the second half, is two for two from there and needs them both to make it a three possession game with 77 seconds left on the clock. First free throw, good. And give the Texans credit, here in this fourth quarter alone, they are seven for nine from the strike. Next free throw, good. 61-52. No pressure defense, so the Lopes can take care of the basketball for a full 30 seconds if they want to. Tierra Brown hands off for Pieta. Pieta being bothered by Benson, and now Benson with the unintentional intentional foul. So the foul is on Benson. That is her third, but only the third team foul. So the Lopes with 20 on the shot clock and a minute left in the game. And the Texans, for the most part, not fouling. Here's Brown to Jackson. Jackson's going to fire it up from 15 and get it. And that might just slam the door. 11-point lead, 50 seconds to go. And a lead pass reeled in by Morton. Give it off for Ibotta. They need a quick shot. Forey in for Benson. Benson will spin, put it up, put it in. But probably too little too late now. Nine-point game. And Tierra Brown will be fouled in the backcourt by J.C. Morton. But again, they had a foul to give. One more, and they will put the Lopes in the bonus, but only 40.9 seconds on the clock. And it looks like Molly Miller is going to get Shorts, Scott, and Pieta out of the lineup. Still a nine-point game, and now the Texans have to foul. Caldwell playing keep away, still playing keep away. Gets it across the timeline. Gets it for Tiana Brown, and again, they don't really have to shoot again. Ten seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock, and the Texans apparently willing to concede this. Shot clock at 10, game clock at 20. Here's Rowell in the corner. Rowell finally fouled by Benson with five on the shot clock, and I'm not sure where that came from. It's a very interesting decision there from the Texans defense, Jim. Again, like you said, it looked like they were almost conceding these final 15 seconds or so, given that the shot clock and the game clock had that 10 second difference, but nonetheless, 15 seconds left, Tavia Rowell's going to the stripe. So now, with only 15.8 seconds on the game clock, Molly Miller is going to get the rest of the starters out. Tierra Brown, Taylor Caldwell, Nana Jackson, all getting high fives as Balagay, Shorts, and Vadas back in to join Tiana Brown and the lady at the free throw line trying to get into the scoring column for the first time tonight. Tavia Rowell, first free throw, won't do it. And remember, these two teams right back at it for game two tomorrow will be on the air right here on GCU TV starting at 5.55. One of two free throws good, 10 point game. And now it's all over but the shouting as the Texans come into the front court. Texans gave it a whirl. 
As the lob into Escamilla, she'll be fouled before she can put the shot up. But again, the Texans have been in the bonus for the last four minutes. And that'll be personal foul. I believe they put up 11, which would not work. The foul is actually on Kennedy Shorts. Make that on Vadas. First free throw not good by Escamilla, but certainly doesn't put a damper on her night. Next free throw is good. 23 points by Escamilla off the Texans bench to lead the way. Lopes don't even have to get it in the front court, so Tiana Brown with three seconds, two seconds, and she'll dribble it out. The Lopes get a scare. Oh, do they get a scare. But they're able to make the plays down the stretch, able to finally get some breathing room midway through the fourth quarter, and they're able to coast to a nine-point victory over the visiting Texans and keep the Texans winless in WAC play. Final score here from GCU Arena in the heart of the valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. The GCU Lopes 64 and the Tarleton Texans 55. The Lopes finally get that 10th win of the season after winning eight of their first nine. They're now 10 and three overall and they move above the 500 mark in WAC play at two and one. And the Texans still in search of their first back WAC victory. They fall to 0-5 in conference play and four and 11. Overall, they've now dropped 10 of their last 12 contests. And so we, a lot of contributors to this one. As a matter of fact, the Lopes wind up with three players in double figures. Lada Pieta with some big shots down the stretch. She winds up in double figures with 10. Taylor Caldwell really more for her defense than her offense, but she winds up with 11 points on the ball game. But when we look at the player of the game, we've got to look at the one who really was the spark plug in those second and third quarters, Jack. Well, she came out in a big way on Friday. She answered the call again tonight. Tiara Brown, you look at 19 points, eight rebounds, shooting nine for 13 from the field, stepping up in a big way. She did find herself into trouble, some personal fouls later on. She ended up with four, but Coach Molly Miller recognizing that, utilizing some of her other key forces. You mentioned the Laura Pierres and the Taylor Caldwells of the world. What a difference this offense is when they're not fouling out of the game late in the fourth <laughs> quarter. And then you look at the likes of Kennedy Shorts making a big impact late. Katie Scott finding her rhythm late as well. This is a completely different offense in this fourth quarter. I mean, tuck and nip to say the least in the first three and a half quarters between these two offenses, but the Lopes able to prevail. And as we look at our Copper State Credit Union final stats, one of the big stats is not the fact that they actually got on the board three points shooting wise. It's the fact that midway through the third quarter, Jack, the Lopes were shooting 30% from the field, but really started to come alive in that last 15 minutes, wind up 28 of 62 from the field, 45%, and more importantly, 23 more shot attempts than the Texans. Yeah, something clicked it in the later stages of this one, Jim, and you mentioned also from downtown distance, the Lopes, a goose egg in that first half, able to come alive three for three in a big pivotal moment in, late in that third quarter to take the lead away from Tarleton, of course, out rebounding Tarleton throughout the duration of this one, creating the mo most opportunities for them, finally able to connecting later on in this game. And again, you mentioned some of those key role players late in the game, the Kennedy Shorts of the world coming alive, as well as Katie Scott beginning to find her rhythm. The Lopes able to outbattle some of those role players for Tarleton. And Molly Miller, when she looks at that turnover stat, she's obviously not going to be pleased by the fact that her team turned it over 18 times. She'll obviously be happy about the fact that they're right on their season average, forcing 26 Charlton miscues. But I think one of the things that will at least be a bright spot for Molly when she looks at that 18 turnovers is the fact that they had 12 at the break and only six after that. And you saw they took much care much better care of the basketball in that fourth quarter. Well, we talked about them learning from their lessons early on in this one, Jim. I think it's safe to say that the Lopes were able to recognize what they did wrong in the first half, and they were able to adjust going into the second half of play. And you got to be happy with some of the little things as well. They hit their free throws tonight, which you got to be pleased with if you're Molly Miller. A lot to take away from this game and a lot to learn from. Again, 24 hours to, again tomorrow, they'll, write, they'll be right back at it against this Texan squad. So again, Tierra Brown, 9 of 13 from the field, 19 points, 8 boards. And then Taylor Caldwell, 11 points, 
um, two rebounds and a few steals. And then, of course, Lauda Pieta also in double figures, five of 11 from the field with 10 points. And then in a losing effort, the two-headed monster for Tarleton, Marissa Escamilla, 23 points off the bench, 13 points for Ayana Dorsey, 11 of those coming in the third quarter, but the Lopes able to shut her out in that fourth quarter, and that was one of the big differences down the stretch. So again, we're only halfway through this WAC doubleheader. As the Lopes move above 500 in WAC play, they're going to try and go 3-1 and one just less than 24 hours from now. We'll be on the air with GCU Tarleton 2 tomorrow night right here in this same building. This is game three of the five-game homestand. We'll be on the air at 5.55 with the pregame show and 6 p.m., with the tip-off. Want to thank our great crew, as always, directing Travis Fleming, producing Marley Thompson and Diana Johnson, Hunku Funsale, and Dominic Hinton on the cameras, and, of course, my partner in crime, Jack O'Hara. Always a pleasure, Jack, when you are next to me, and we want to remind you that you can always follow Grand Canyon University on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Don't forget to download the Lope Nation app so you can watch all the live streams from your mobile device or subscribe to, your, to our YouTube channel. That's at youtube.com slash GCU. So until we talk to you tomorrow night from right back here at GCU Arena, this is Jim Howell speaking to you from the heart of the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, and reminding you the final score in a tough one for the Lopes, the GCU Lopes 64 and the Tarleton Texans 55. Have a great night, everybody, and go Lopes. Thank <laughs> you.